Welcome to a series called He Trains My Hands for War, where we're going through the book of Joshua verse by verse because Joshua is the only example that we have of a nation of people who lean on God and depend on God in warfare. And they literally the whole nation becomes the army of the living God. And they are obedient to his instructions step by step when their parents were too afraid to do what they're doing right now. Uh, but they're just walking into it confidently because they believe in prophecy, they understand prophecy, and they just walk right into it. Even though the world says, hey, this is scary. Uh, God said, I promise you this will happen. So they just walk right into it. And that's something that I don't believe this generation really has. It definitely doesn't have a nation of people. Uh, there's a remnant. And one day in the end times, the Antichrist will war against the saints. And this is the example that we have on how we should be behaving. So it's important we go through it. Um, and as we've gone through it, we've seen that they have just crossed over the Jordan River. We've been doing this for a few months now. And we haven't even got to warfare yet. This is just all preparation for warfare. And they've crossed over the Jordan, the entire nation. And God has literally put fear in the hearts and minds of those people in the kingdom surrounding this area of the Jordan and Gilgal. And not only that, they put fear in the hearts and minds of the Israelites to fear God and to fear Joshua specifically the rest of his life. Um, and then they set up some memorial stones. Um, and then a particular thing uh, takes place after that. And now keep in mind before we get into this that they've been wandering in the desert for 40 years that their parents 40 years earlier came to that same spot at the Jordan and were too afraid to go over. Uh, they wanted to go back into slavery in Egypt. So God made them wander around the wilderness for 40 years until they all that until that generation all dropped dead. Uh, with the exception of Joshua and Aaron. And now what you have is you have this new generation, some young, some a little bit older. They, you know, they're maybe in their 40s at the, or at the oldest, really. Um, now that you have that group, uh, there are some things that need to be taking place. And some of those people, they were born in the wilderness. They, they literally were born in the wilderness. They've been wandering the wilderness for 30, 35 years. Uh, so there's some preparation that has to take place. Uh, so we're going to go to Joshua 5, starting verse 1. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites were on the west side of the Jordan, and all the kings of the Canaanites were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over, that their heart melted, and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way after they'd come out of Egypt. For all the people who had come out had been circumcised, but all the people who were born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. So Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not been circumcised on the way. So it was, when they had finished circumcising all the people, that they stayed in their place in the camp till they were healed. This is very important. Circumcision to God is extremely important. Um, it's an, a very important thing that, that must take place. And this has to happen. They can't go walking into this thing until this takes place. And it makes sense that they weren't circumcised in the wilderness because of the infections, of the, the wandering. There's no time to sit and heal. That the generation that came out of Egypt, they were circumcised. But this new generation, they had not been circumcised. Uh, more so, once they become circumcised, there's a time for healing that has to take place. 
This is extremely important to God. And this is something that wasn't just, uh, you know, we're preparing for war. We're preparing for spiritual warfare. And that's very different. We saw a moment similar to this. If we go all the way back to Exodus, what we see is here, Moses uh, got the vision of the burning bush to go set his people free to go to Egypt uh, to show miracles and signs um, and curses to Egypt uh, to set the people free. Um, and then just this really peculiar thing happens. Uh, so we're going to go to, on his way, we're going to go to Exodus 4, go to 22. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my people go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your firstborn. So here's the message that he has for Moses to give to Pharaoh. But then this happens. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let him go. Then she said, You are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. Now, this is interesting because ultimately what, what happened was God has prepared Moses from his birth on. You know, he spent decades in the Egyptian court and then decades in the wilderness training him for this moment in time. Um, literally 30, 40 years of his life, he has been preparing for this moment in time and God then ordains him for this moment of time, gives him instructions for this moment of time, empowers him to do miracles for this moment of time, and then seeks to kill him all of a sudden. Nothing changed with Moses, but he sought to kill Moses in, in this moment. <laughs> And it was because he's walking into this thing uncircumcised. He's walking into this thing with his son uncircumcised. His son is unprepared for spiritual warfare. His family is not prepared for spirit. They have to be circumcised before they can walk into the spiritual warfare. You know why God did this thing? You know, I don't know if I can even begin to wrap my head around it, but he did this thing. And it's extremely important to him, more so even all that he had done for Moses to set the people free. He was going to kill him. And in the last moment, his wife grabs a sharp stone and circumcised the son because she understood what was necessary. And then just threw that flesh at Moses and called him a, a husband of blood. It's it's kind of a strange, and then it just goes right on to, all right, now let's just get back on this path and keep walking down. This is why it's so important, and this is why the Israelites had to stop. They had to be physically prepared. Uh, there is a physical preparation that must take place for spiritual warfare, warfare as well, and it's strange. It's, it's not like what I talk about, you know, when I say, well, let's physically prepare for war, let's work out, let's train let's you know get out and run do some fighting training do some weapons training that's a physical preparation for a physical war this is a physical preparation for a spiritual war and, and that's a very different thing and, and it was necessary the entire nation was circumcised you know we're talking over a million circumcisions taking place uh, well, at least 500,000, assuming it's about a 50-50 with men and women. But all the men, other than just those couple that were still alive, you know, Joshua and Aaron, the rest of them, they were all born in the wilderness. <laughs> they, it had to be done. They can't walk into this spiritual war, this, this physical and real war that they're about to walk in until they prepared for the, the, the spiritual aspect of it which requires circumcision. You know, the lesson that I think we have to get out of this is that this is something that, that we have to, you know, there's a lot of strange things that God's gonna ask us to do. This one, if, if they were disobedient, he would have killed them. Well, they just would have walked into battle and then killed themselves, but that would have been God killing them. 
he literally would have killed them had they refused to do this thing. Um, but there was no refusing. They just did it. Did it. There you go. You know, it's important that when God asks us to do these strange things, uh, that we be obedient to them. They might not make sense. They might be scary. They may even be bloody. But it's important that we do them. Any thoughts or insight on any of this, uh, definitely put that below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Feel called to support this channel with Patreon. That link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God. Love your family. Love guns.